Yo, you lovely people. My name is Lee Davey. I am not an alcoholic. I refuse to be anonymous. I am someone that doesn't drink alcohol. I am a father, a husband, a leader, lover. I am a master life coach and I spend every single moment of my life helping people live a self-led life. To live in a place of consciousness, clarity, to come from a place of compassion as often as you can in life, okay? And that means no alcohol. There is no place for alcohol in a self-led life, all right? So those of you who stop drinking alcohol, I'm there to help you to live this self-led life. And I'm gonna do that today. I'm gonna to talk about the word relapse. And I know relapse can, uh, a lot of people in the sobriety space don't like the word relapse. Um, I'm not too bothered about it myself. We need a word that we can use that people are like, oh yeah, I understand what we're talking about. So relapse does the business, right? And, you know, in my personal experience of relapsing in my own uh, journey to be someone that doesn't drink alcohol, I've had two sorts of relapses. I've had what I would call a um, shallow relapse. Let's just call it a shallow relapse. So I've um, been in a situation where I have been someone that doesn't drink alcohol and then I've drunk alcohol for a specific reason and then the next day I'd be like, ah, I shouldn't have done that. And then I get back on my vow. I just, it's gone, deal with it, move on, right? And then there's another relapse, which I would say is more like the wheels are falling off the bus kind of relapse, where I relapsed and then all of a sudden I started to go on this descent of I am getting very close to back where I was um, before I started drinking. So everything in my life started going wrong. I started drinking more and more and more and I started to become um, the, I started to regress, right? Um, and that is like a deeper uh, relapse where we isolate ourselves and we go backwards and we stop doing the work and we stop the self-growth and we stop the self-love and we get involved in drama. So there's this shallow relapse, have a drink, move on, great. Deeper relapse, real massive problems, right? And it's really important to, I just want to talk about this shallow relapse uh, a minute, right? So it's easy for us sometimes to feel really super confident uh, about our knowledge and our understanding and our new mental map, our new paradigm that we've created around what it means to be someone that doesn't drink alcohol. We feel really strong in that. Um, and then that allows us when we do drink to go, okay, I got it. My strength is there. I look at alcohol very differently. No problem, right? I'm not going to drink again. Woo. I'm going to learn from that. But the key thing to remember here is, why did we drink in that moment? Now, in all cases, right, that I've experienced in myself and working with loads and loads and loads of people who have alcohol addiction, in that moment, or actually building up to that moment over a long period of time, there is a series of unmet needs in your life that are nagging away at you and they're making you feel uncomfortable, okay? And what you used to do in the past is when you had these unmet needs, there was a firefighter part of you, a part of your psyche, right? Who would come to the rescue, go in its fire truck, and it would grab alcohol and drink it as a way to douse out all those flames, okay? Now, we know that actually when you pour alcohol on your problems, woof, right? It, it creates a wildfire out of a paper fire. But this firefighter, he doesn't see all that. It just feels your unmet need. It starts to get afraid. It starts to get worried. And it tells you to drink alcohol to fulfill that need. Unmet need, alcohol, fulfilled need, right? So when we have that kind of like what I'm calling a shallow relapse, I had a relapse today and drunk, but today I'm okay. My invitation is to carry on and do the postmortem, is to get inside of yourself and say, hey, whew, what part of me was crying out for help yesterday? What part of me felt strong emotions? And what were those emotions? And to, and to find that part in your body, right? And then to ask that part, what was going on for you? What did you need? Okay. And then understand why that part of you, that vulnerable part of you was feeling really insecure 
or feeling the need for approval, okay? And why we turn to alcohol to control that situation. And then to love and to witness that part, okay? And to, and to give it the love or the attention or whatever that it needed. And then at the same time, recognize and feel into and talk to this firefighter part that is protecting that more vulnerable part by drinking. And say, hey, dude, drinking is not really helping. We need to come up with another plan, right? Okay. And it goes much deeper than that. But having a conversation with that part is equally as important. So we need to do that post-mortem. It is really important, right? Now, here's my second point that I want to go on to. For most of us, that is really difficult. It is really difficult to do that post-mortem. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of vulnerability around going inside and talking to ourselves and giving ourselves self-love. There's a skills issue. We don't know what to do and we don't know how to do it. So the whole thing feels uncomfortable, right? And all of a sudden, because we feel uncomfortable, there are parts of us that will want to feel comfortable, okay? And one of the things, one of the ways we can do that is to run away, okay? Let's run away from this issue, okay? One of the ways to deal with it is by drinking again, right? So it's really important if you want to learn to understand and raise awareness of what your needs are and why they're important to you, first and foremost, and then to get into the body and learn to feel when your, when your needs are not met and then to develop the skills, okay, to meet your own needs and not at the expense of other people. And when you do that, you can clearly see when other people you love that their needs are not being met and how you are contributing towards that. Or you can witness that they are not able to meet their own needs and you can help and support them from a place of compassion, right? Really important. Now, how do you find people to help you do this stuff? Well, the first and the easiest way to do this, right, um, is to find a community. Is to find a community that talks this language, that does this work, that promotes this way of being as normal and as our higher purpose, our goal, right? And that's what we have at Stride. And we won't be the only one, right? We won't be the only one. I haven't been in any other communities long enough like to know if there's anyone else out there like Stride, right? But to be in a group and a community like Stride is incredibly important, right? Why? Because my f I just recently had a friend who went two years without having a drink. And then an unmet need or a series of unmet needs accumulated in this, uh, this old paradigm, this old mental map of if I drink alcohol, I will fulfill my needs. And a sip of alcohol came into the equation, right? That person is a part of strife. And that person, because she's a part of strife, she can't run, she can't hide, because we don't let her. And I don't mean we don't let her in toxic masculinity. Oi, what are you doing? I mean, when people go missing, when people disappear, we know that there's something going on and we reach out and say, hey, what's going on? Do you need help and do you need support? We also um, create within the community that understanding that shit like this happens and to allow people to find the courage and the hope and the belief in themselves that they can be vulnerable, right? Really super important. So this person now is able to come out and talk to the group about what happened. And now we can help support her to identify and understand the unmet needs that led to this decision to drink alcohol and to work on that and those as a group, as a community. The second way you can do this is to hire a coach. Now, when it comes to unmet needs, my advice to you would be seek out a coach more than seek out a therapist. I was reading the other day on the Reddit Alcoholism Forum and uh, this unknown poster was saying, I've got all this trauma, all these issues, all these problems. And my therapist has said to me, I don't think talking is going to be enough. <laughs> of course 
it's not going to be enough. The body remembers, the body holds the truth, right? So you need to find a coach that can deal with the body, that is safe and secure enough to go in there with you, to talk to these parts of you that are feeling really uncomfortable, to get beneath into the root causes. You have two choices when it comes to dealing with this issue we have around alcohol, right? You can look at it like a garden full of weeds, and then you can come to somewhere like Strive, and then we can get the shears, and we can chop off the heads of the weeds, and you can look at your garden and get a go, oh, wow, it looks beautiful, and leave. Or you can come to a place like Strive, and you can look at your garden, and I will hold you by the hand, and I will get a spade, not some shears, and we will dig, and we will rip those roots out gently, and we will throw them away, and then we will look at the garden and see everlasting change, my brothers and sisters, right? So find yourself a coach. Yes, I am a coach, a master life coach, graduate from the Elementum Coaching Institute, and I do this work, and I can help you, okay? But I also, if you don't jive with my energy, if you don't jive with what I'm all about, I have access to hundreds of coaches who believe just like I believe. So just reach out, okay? And I can find you one. If I'm not a suitable um, candidate for you, I can find you one, okay? But relapse, really, really important. It's a, it's a sign, a red flag, that there is an unmet need within your psyche that needs attention. And it is okay. It's actually more smarter to say, okay, who, who has felt this? Who has overcome this? Who has got the skills in the area to guide me to find my power here? Who can help me, right? That is just oh, amazing. And, and when you heal, imagine the power that projects outwards to your children, to your work colleagues, to your loved ones, to your sisters, to your brothers, to your family. When they look at you and go, what has happened here? This person has a glow, an aura around them. Ah, I love this energy. How did you do that? Then you become a role model of living a self-led life. We provide that at Strive. If you're interested in coming and join us, let me know. If you want other resources that I know about that does this work, let me know. If you want a coach that is me, let me know. If you want a coach that isn't me, male or female, let me know. All right. Much love, everybody. Strive on.